Social Darwinism, of course, grew out of the Darwinism period. Uh, it was a, a translation of, of uh, the, the biological uh, uh, tenets of, of Darwinism into the social uh, domain uh, to explain um, uh, such problems as poverty and uh, delinquency and crime and and human impairments and degeneracy and uh, in fact everything that was considered to be uh, bad, uh, suboptimal and so on uh, uh, was traced to uh, to um, uh, the forces of um, of heredity and and selection and um, positive and negative uh, selection and so on. Uh, but it is a historical fact, not one that uh, was of necessity, but of, of accident of history, uh, that Darwinism allied itself uh, very, very fundamentally with materialism. Now, that didn't have to happen, and there are to this very day people who, who are... Uh, 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 Darwinists are not materialists, and they always have been. So it's a quite possible uh, uh, scenario. Uh, and there is no, in fact, uh, the philosophy of science and epistemology would tell us, if, if you knew these fields, uh, that uh, uh, Darwinistic biology uh, cannot possibly make any assertions about uh, the uh, reality of uh, materialism or, or of, of a spiritual worldview or so on. It has nothing to say one way or the other. Uh, and the philosophers know that, uh, but the, uh, the scientists don't know that. Uh, very few of them have studied uh, um, philosophy and um, epistemology and uh, philosophy of science. So they, they, the majority of scientists today who are materialists live under a misconception. Now, the problem is that when you embrace a materialistic worldview, you pretty much lose all foundations uh, for structuring a society and uh, even, even smaller uh, level of interactions in a benign way, because uh, moral systems cannot really thrive or exist over the long run without a, uh, um, a uh, uh, metaphysical foundation. And when you, when you embrace materialism, then Logic dictates that this is a world uh, in which everything is material. There are no gods, there are no souls, there are no spirits. Uh, there's nothing immaterial, there's no afterlife, there are no angels, no demons. Uh, and also that <clears throat> in that world, um, human beings are essentially... Uh, uh, something like uh, automatons, uh, as are animals. Uh, they are, they are uh, matter, a higher, uh, more highly evolved form of, of matter, you might say. And that is all there, there is. And uh, therefore, uh, what foundation would you have to say that one should be uh, kindly to anybody, for that matter, or to uh, a, a, an impaired person, uh, a limited person, a sick person, a dependent person. Uh, they are uh, as, as much uh, material entities as anything else. The, uh, uh, if a person becomes a helper, the helper is nothing more than a material entity. So you have objects serving upon objects. In human services, in materialistic human services, you have objects serving upon objects using material processes. 
And within that ideological context, even if it's not explicit, bad things happen. Bad things get, get done. You just don't have a foundation uh, to convince people to be unselfish and, and giving and self-sacrificing uh, and kind and forbearing and, and, uh, and, and, and so on. Uh, uh, in fact, um, it's, it's almost anti-biological. Anti and that is what the uh, what Darwinist, the social Darwinist said. It, it is uh, self-destructive for society to be kind to its degenerate and dependent uh, members who are out uh, breeding everybody else and, and spreading their, their decadence. Uh, eventually, um, uh, they will uh, out, so to speak, out negatively outperform uh, f functioning members of society, and they will bring uh, society down. And uh, um, and within the materialistic framework, that is in fact logical. That is a uh, a consequent, a, a coherent way of arguing. Uh, and uh, it leads to cruelty, and it leads to death-making, and unkindness, and um, and uh, abandonment of dependent people, and and seeing their killing as as a, as a both a mercy to them and a benefit to society, and so on. So uh, we can say, as a truism, that's one of those things. Do you see the world the way it really is, or not? Uh, we can say it's a truism that any human service system or any society uh, uh, th that adheres to a de facto materialism uh, will, um, um, uh, will bring on atrocities. Uh, uh, awful things will happen in that kind of society. And of course, we saw that in Marxism, we saw that in Nazism, uh, and uh, uh, we can see it in the, uh, certain aspects of the culture of modernism now, uh, that uh, that um, has begun to once more become explicit over the, the, the assertion that uh, that some people are simply worth more than others. Uh, and uh, and that there's no logical rationale uh, for arguing uh, that uh, society should uh, be uh, supportive of uh, life or dependency of uh, of certain people. You know, so we get increasingly explicit arguments in support of uh, um, well, of course, certainly abortion. Uh, that there's nothing particularly intrinsically valuable about uh, about the unborn child, uh, and, uh, and that uh, we get various levels of arguments. One is that the unborn child is not human, or is not a child, or or if, if it is, that uh, it is not valuable, and uh, and uh, uh, it is the life person with the power who uh, is, should be the deciding uh, party. Um, over the, the weak, the defenseless, the, the dependent, down to euthanasia on the other side, uh, that uh, lives are not worth living, that uh, de sick, dependent uh, people uh, uh, have no intrinsic merit, uh, that, um, that they would be better off dead. Uh, at one time, these arguments came within the social Darwinistic framework, now they come within another kind of materialistic uh, framework, but, uh, but the argument ends up essentially being, uh, being uh, the same. Uh, some, uh, talk, they talk about futile lives, uh, from that comes, you know, f uh, uh, the, the idea that, uh, that the people are not valuable who <laughs> lead such lives. Uh, that they would be better off dead, and uh, and so on. So, uh, um, 
So anyway, that uh, that all uh, will come about, uh, uh, thoughts like that and, and actions like that, uh, when uh, you adhere to a materialistic foundation and you are logical. Now, a lot of people are not coherent and logical. They, they mouth materialism, materialistic worldview, but they still coast along on a long tradition of Judeo-Christian or Judeo, Greco-Judeo-Christian values, uh, and uh, and will uh, support um, uh, uh, charitable measures and uh, and uh, uh, and kindness and, and services and so on to dependent people, uh, but. Uh, in an incoherent fashion, uh, because, uh, as I say, they do it because of uh, there's a the f momentum of historical tradition of the Western Christianity that uh, they still carry some, but ideologically, uh, many of these people do not have uh, a um, philosophical uh, or more or less religious foundation to maintain these beliefs. And so in time, you, you get a uh, over generations, you get a deterioration <coughs> of um, the altruism part and uh, the uh, the logic of materialism will assert itself. The leaders in the field of mental retardation for several generations were uh, or adhered to social Darwinistic thinking. Um, now, you, you, you had exactly the phenomenon I, I was just now uh, uh, talking about, that many of them were not unkind people, you know. They came from a cultural tradition. Uh, Goddard was a Quaker, uh, you know, uh, that's a good example. And, uh, uh, and others uh, uh, were not even explicitly materialistic. Uh, uh, they were perhaps Christians who, who uh, embraced uh, inconsistently a uh, materialistic social Darwinism. You know, that's the kind of incoherency that we so often uh, see. But the leaders did embrace social Darwinism. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and that uh, uh, impressed itself upon the field and the measures that were taken and the institutionalism uh, that developed, uh, the, the dehumanization in the institutions, the overcrowding, uh, because you had to stuff as many people in those institutions to keep uh, uh, them from breeding and so on. Uh, and yet, at the same time, some of those uh, leaders uh, were, were known to be kind individuals on a personal level. They were very kind. You know, and uh, manage that that uh, incoherency, you know, of, of this personal kindness uh, 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 which they grown up with, and and the tradition it came from with the new ideology which called for societal measures of great severity. So personal uh, you know, non-severity on a personal level, but great severity on a systemic and service system level. And that uh, was sort of the way it was for a long time. Uh, and by the time uh, uh, social Darwinism lost credibility, uh, other disasters happened. Uh, World War I came along, so you couldn't have any reform during that time in its aftermath. Uh, shortly uh, then after, you had the you had the Depression, and uh, there's not much you could do then. And then uh, you had World War II, and, uh, and so you had uh, many decades that uh, went by that had outlived the social Darwinism dog dogma, but, uh, but where there was not a sufficient foundation in society for uh, far-going reforms until 
uh, World War I was over for a while and uh, in the 1950s or so you began to see uh, the stirrings of, of reform that uh, became bigger and, 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 and uh, um, snowballed you know, into the 60s and 70s. Um, you had to have that kind of recovery, societal recovery, you might say, uh, to permit the uh, uh, progress and, uh, to be made.